Okay, let's start. First of all, now important few things. Till now, our as per our knowledge, there are three major subatomic elements which are proton, neutron, and electrons, right? But remember that now till till my knowledge, it's about 93, 94 small subatomic atoms in an atom. Okay. What do you mean by antimatters? What's your point of view on that? Yes, Manu. Hello. They're identical to matter particles actually, like in their mass. Yeah. It's actually the thing is that's what our belief is that if, for example, we have electron, then we must have another sort of electron which having the same mass as electron, but the charges will be different. So matter means if you say matter and antimatter, because that's what our belief from the start that if there is something that comes in pairs, actually, like in general, if this is the world, there must be an akhara, there must be the thereafter. So same thing here. If there is something available here or something we have it here, then there is an antimatter for that as well. So there are different for the time being, is it? The universe is made up of matter particles, proton, neutron, and electrons. But all matter particles have anti-matter counterpart as well. So basically, if you check this out, if you have electron, which has a charge negative one, then you have an anti-matter of it, which is positron. Same electron, but have a positive charge. If there is a proton, then you have an anti-proton having negative one mass. If you have a neutron, then you have an anti-neutron. Then there is a sort of uh, particle called a neutrino. Then there is an anti-neutrino as well. So basically, if you have you think there is a mass, then definitely there is an anti-mass of it as well. Having same mass, but different charge. That's what we mean by anti-particles and particles. If there is a matter, then there is an anti-matter. I want you to quickly put a heading and write these ones and then after we finish that we will do the equations related to that okay let's quickly do that especially draw that table as well yeah i was asking you do you have any contact with zoha because i tried to contact but she didn't respond oh no i don't have any okay might be then there is issue okay now apart from electron the corresponding nt pair has the same name with prefix nt and line above corresponds to the matter period symbol okay so a neutron particle is such as neutron or neutrino is its own antiparticle. Okay. So now little properties of antiparticles. Although antiparticles have the opposite charge, the matter counterpart, they still have identical mass and the rest mass energy. Now, what do you mean by rest mass energy? What do you think of it? We energy believe does equivalent to the mass. Actually, when it's, uh, there's no momentum. Actually, you know what we believe in, but we believe it because when they move it, actually, they move with the speed of light. And when they move with the speed of light, definitely then they, there will be no mass because that's what uh, Einstein believed was that if these kind of material move with the speed of light, their mass will be converted into sort of a light or photon or something. They become photon or they travel with the speed of light. So the mass is given when they are in the state of rest even though they are not in the never can never be in the state of rest but that's what our belief is that if they are in the state of rest then they are basically having a mass otherwise they become massless entities that's why this term called as a rest mass because if they are not in the rest then there will be no mass and we have done the last, you know, last time we have done an equation in which we have seen that E is equal to mc square will be applied on the mass that will be converted into energy, right? So that's what it is actually. So they still have identical mass and rest mass energy. The rest mass energy of a particle is the energy equivalent to the mass of a particle at rest. Now, data sheet provides the masses in kilo kg, rest mass energies in mega electron volt for proton, neutron electron and nitrino. These masses are identical for their corresponding antiparticles, antiproton, antineutron, positron and antineutrino. I want you to write that and write this table as well because these this, this table is important. This is neutrino and antineutrino, okay? Yes, sir, I'm done. Done. Now, 
once you understand with this anti particles and all these things now there are two procedures we have it one is called as pair production and the other one we call as pair annihilation now what do you mean by annihilation in general when you say annihilation there is a movie few few like one or two years back there is a movie come as annihilation what do you meant by this normally annihilation means the dem demolition i mean the something demolished so in general what actually here happening is then when two paired sort of you know those matter and anti matter actually combine together or they meet together one matter and one anti matter they destroy it and once they destroy it they release two photons of gamma rays that type of process is called as pair annihilation so when a particle meets its anti particle pair the two will annihilate annihilate means they vanish they finish so annihilation is when particle meets its equivalent anti particle they both are destroyed and their masses is converted into energy in the form of two gamma rays photon so the process is called as pair annihilation or you can say annihilation the diagram is just shown here in this case these two particles are electrons and positrons so when electron and positron collide their mass is converted into energy in the form of two photons emitted in opposite direction right the minimum energy of one photon after annihilation is the total rest mass total rest energy of one of the particles so basically e minimum is equal to h f where f is the frequency minimum frequency or you can say e now what exactly it is check it out e minimum is the minimum energy of one of the photon produced h is a planck's constant and f is a minimum frequency of one of the photons produced and e is the rest mass of one of the particles now another very important thing in this to conserve momentum two momentum will move apart in opposite direction now because we know that total momentum before and after collision must be same or total momentum remains the same all the time so if you just see that these two photons are traveling in two opposite direction so that momentum of the system remain the same right so basically what is annihilation in which two particles one particle and one anti particle they combine together and once they combine together their masses will be converted into gamma rays photon and then afterwards you will actually get two photon uh, gamma particles but both are in opposite direction that's what we called as pair annihilation or generally we called as annihilation now what do you think pair production will be actually it's totally reverse of what is happening is in annihilation here two one negative and positive electrons combine to give you uh, this what you call this photon i want you to write that one as well in that case two photon will combine to give you two pairs of you know uh, subatomic particles but first copy that we will see to it as well and then sir okay now let's do the pair production it's same like that but it's a reversed pair production is the opposite of annihilation what is pair production when a photon interacts with a nucleus or atom and energy of pro photon is used to create a particle and anti particle pair so what happened when the photon actually strikes or interact with a nucleus and in the result you get two one matter and one anti matter that procedure is called as pair production okay so one photon so is this like photon. is this like beta or decay mm, yes you can say that because in beta negative and beta positive we do have this kind of thing but this is a different than that this is not fusion or fission or anything this is a separate kind of thing in which a special thing is one positive i mean one matter and one anti matter is produced because the one i, I will of course share with you once again in beta negative it's not always the matter and anti matter produced we do have 
some uh, anti matter things produced but along with anti matter it's not necessary that you will always have a matter like if for example electron is produced in that it's not necessary that from with electron you will have a positron as well it may be electron on something else or it may be positron with something else but here in this case you will have electron and along with along with the electron you will have a positron as well having same masses but different charge so that is the difference between beta decay and this one in a minute you you will get to know okay also draw the diagram because this diagram is important you should know that now let's move forward now if you check this out when photon with enough energy interact with nucleus it can produce an electron positron pair this means that the energy of photon must be above a certain value to provide the total rest mass energy of particles and anti particles so minimum energy for photon to undergo pair production is total rest mass energy of the particle produced which is equal to e minimum is equal to h minimum is equal to 2e so here the energy will become double minimum energy will be two times so it means that your photon must have energy equal to 2e then and only then you will have energy equal to particles and anti particles will produce okay so this is actually opposite to the previous one. so why it's 2e because one for the electron and one for the positron here whatever is produced like electron and positron they will also move in the opposite direction because of the conservation of moment to maintain the conservation of moment i want you to write this formula it is a basic formula and that's it okay now there is an example which is actually done for us they say calculate the maximum wavelength of one of the photon produced when proton and anti proton annihilate to each other now here the rest mass of proton and anti mass anti proton is 938.257 i think this is actually given here in the table yeah this is the one 938 so basically so the first step is to write the quantities which is rest mass of energy of proton and anti neutron anti proton is 938.257 mega electron volt and 1 mega electron volt is equal to how did they find out they first converted into electron volt by multiply with the charge which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 and that that will be multiplied with 10 to the power 6 that is mega then they have write the equation f minimum is equal to c upon lambda why this one that one is very simple equation f is equal to frequency lambda v is equal to frequency lambda where v is a speed of light so c is equal to f lambda so if you need to find v minimum it will be c upon lambda so for minimum frequency the lambda must be the maximum one. that is the formula you have to use eh now the second most important thing is just place the value because this is your e h upon now how come this formula came into came into being e is equal to hf so f is equal to e is equal to h into c upon lambda max right now simple you cross multiply that you will get lambda max is equal to hc upon e it means you know h you know c constant the only thing you do you you also know as energy so basically to find out the lambda maximum all the constants value are given here h we know that c we know that energy is given as well so simply you place the values in this and actually you found out the lambda maximum so what is lambda maximum in this case 1.32 into 10 to the power minus 15 m so it means that maximum wavelength of one of the photon is this which is 1.32 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters so this is constant quantity means you know that and you can find out by simple 
small calculation e is equal to hf minimum that is the minimum energy for one basically photon then what we do we know that f is equal to sorry v is equal to frequency lambda that is our igcsc knowledge right so now the point is we know that photons are moving with the speed of light so let's remove with i mean let's replace c with the f and so lambda value will be equal to c upon f now manur can you tell me one thing if this is the formula s upon f i mean s up, uh, not s upon f i mean if the formula becomes to find out f value you can say so if i say f is equal to lambda c upon lambda then if f will be minimum what is the value of lambda maximum or minimum maximum maximum because it's in denominator so that should be maximum so lambda max now interesting fact is we know that e is equal to hf by planck's constant so let's replace your f with that value so e is equal to h c upon lambda so if i ask you lambda max then it is equal to h c upon e so this is the formula for lambda max now if you check this formula you will have a constant c you will have a constant h and you will have a constant e as well because we know that in the above we can see that rest mass energy of a proton is equal to 938.257 so actually all the values are a constant value it means that lambda maximum will be the constant value lambda maximum will be the constant so you replace the values in that and you will get your answer i want you to copy this now if you understand with this one right that is very small topic we have done with okay now the topic we have left with that and then inshallah aziz we will jump to our mechanics thing we have seen through it because actually i had to tell you matter and antimatter before we jumped into that but it was a path of it okay now for alpha decay there is no issue we know that once there is a alpha decay the mass number is reduced by 4 and atomic number is reduced by 2 right like here important thing is this one which actually i am interested in that is called a beta minus and beta now especially the question which actually i wanted to answer that's the reason i brought it you here you were just saying that pair production is looking like the same but it's a bit different now check this out what is the difference first of all beta minus now what happened in beta minus because when neutron turns into a proton actually the mass number remain the same but proton neutron will be converted into proton so what actually it emitting electron and anti electron neutrino the question is anti electron neutrino is a different element electron is a different element so they both are not anti matters so that is the difference between pair production and simple beta minus but actually you received you got one electron and one anti electron electron you can say neutrino in this it's not positron positron is a anti matter of electron it's uh, a matter of neutrino anti electron neutrino having zero mass so basically during beta minus in which uh, neutron is converting into proton electron is actually emitted or you can say electron is formed and one anti electron neutrino form the sign of anti neutron sign is this it's like that and this dash means it's a anti particle an electron is a simple matter so neutron change into one proton along with that one electron plus one entry 
electron neutrino. It's very easy to remember. Along with electron, it will be anti-electron neutrino. In case of beta positive, in which proton converts into neutron, if you check this out, you will have a positron that is anti-electron and on the other side it will be electron neutron, not the anti-particle but a simple electron. So in that case, the equation will be that. NT, if there is a dash on that. Without NT, when there is no dash on that. In one case, you will have one electron and one anti electron neutron. In other case, when actually proton converts into neutrons, then you will have positron because proton is converting and the other anti particle becomes electron neutron. Manur, any question in this? No, sir. I want you to write this please quickly. Above one, I think you have already written, or do you write it? This one. I think we have write this alpha particle decay, don't we? Yes. Then put a heading beta minus. That is important. And draw this diagram along with the equation. Did you notice in the equation they didn't show electrons? Can you tell me the reason why they didn't show the electron? Because the beta is the electron. Yes, actually, this is the case. <laughs> now, let's write beta plus in which proton is converted into neutron. And you will have positron. Along with the positron, you will have, you can say, a electron neutron. So, one neutron you found out and one positron along with one electron neutron. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, there is an example which is being done for you, but uh, neutron, uh, this is neutron number, proton number. Wait a minute. And neutron emission, electron emission. Okay. Okay. I want you to copy this one as well quickly. They say electron neutrino is a type of subatomic particle with no charge and negligible mass, which is also emitted from the nucleus. Actually, this is a new particle. That's the reason it's being written over here. It's a sort of neutrino is a different type of material having no mass. In it. The anti neutrino is the anti particle of neutrino. Electron anti neutrino are produced during beta negative decay while electron neutrino are produced during beta positivity. Although neutrino has no charge and negligible mass, its, its existence was hypothesized to account for the conservation of energy in beta decay. Now, this is very important. Why actually and how do we know that this is there? So, this is actually to, to compensate the energy because when you calculate the input and output energy, we found out there is some energy missing. Or you can say there is some extra energy at the output side. So, that energy is equivalent to that electron neutrino or sometimes anti-electron neutrino. So, that's how they give the name to anti-electron neutrino or electron neutrino. Okay. So, this is actually, uh, what do you say that, attribute to the conservation of the energy in a beta decay. Okay. I want you to copy that and then the next topic will be we will be doing next time. Let's copy that. Mr. I'm done. You're done? Okay. Now actually if you see that our topics are actually done. We are completed with this uh, radioactivity and all this. Only one topic actually it's not done actually but let me just quick yeah. We have done with everything. Now, one small topic is left here. Uh, actually, we have already done that. But you know that uh, Rutherford atomic model in which alpha particles are bombarded uh, with the alpha particles are bombarded on a nucleus. I just want to discuss that thing in more detail because I have seen there are past papers related to that. Okay. So, in the next class, we will discuss that and then I will quickly jump on the mechanics. Right. 
So inshallah, Laziz, but so, I, yeah, you're saying something? Can we do materials first? Because I have trouble with that. Which topic exactly? Uh, like the springs. Okay. The and right. parallel springs. No problem. So what we do, we will start with strains. Uh, I mean, stress and strain thing. That's what you're talking about? Stress and strain? Yeah. And okay. Young's model. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We will do that. Okay. One more thing in that, that as soon as we finish stress and strain, then I, I was thinking of, you know, solving the past paper things as well. So what I was planning that if we will be able to finish this stress in the string till the end of the next week, we will start papers like we, how many classes we have in a week? Four classes. I think. Yeah. So then what we do, we will do two days of paper and two days theory right after the next week. What do you say? Okay, sir. Yeah. Right. yeah. Not this week, definitely. Once we finish with that string and you know that material thing inshallah you will be understanding that one last topic uh, will be we will be doing tomorrow along with your stress string and strain i will inshallah explain it to you will be under you will understand that no way okay so see you inshallah tomorrow tomorrow we have a class yes we do oh, okay then take care thank you bye and ask hafsa actually you, uh, yeah ask Doha that uh, why she she didn't join it uh, or is there real genuine issue? I know that the way there is a connection issue. So if there is a connection also, that's fine. Otherwise, just let me know that she really wanted to continue or what exactly? Because examination is just there. You are connected, so why she is not connecting? Okay. Okay, I'll ask her. Okay, thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Bye.